Hey everybody, how's it going today? It's Carpo, and I'm hoping I can cover this in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, like many things, I, I've been sitting on these ideas for about two weeks now, kind of processing, fermenting, and uh, deciding if this is even a subject I really even want to talk about. And that subject is police, police corruption, uh, police abuse, um, a whole host of other things that I could talk about. But I really want to make a few main points here, and this is just coming from a guy who I don't consider myself a, a criminal, you know. But when I was growing up, of course, I got myself into trouble. And uh, there were some times when uh, I did stupid things, like every other kid does, you know. We would hop trains, and we'd throw rocks through windows of abandoned buildings, and uh, pretty much stupid little things, partying on the train bridge. Things that are, of course, against the law, but aren't harming anyone generally. And during that time I found cannabis, started smoking marijuana, taking psychedelics, so I was technically breaking the law. But I was a good person, and I've carried this with me till today, my fear of police. At that time, any time I saw a cop, I was afraid that they were going to bust me, because I had had so many issues with police in the past. I've been surrounded by cops at two in the morning walking home from a friend's house, you know, as a 15-year-old with them just berating me and harassing me. I live two blocks from here, man. All the cops knew me. Um, it was just this kind of power trip that they always played. And as I got older, I built a resentment to police, you know. I said, fuck cops was my attitude. But as a mature adult, I guess, uh, at the tender age of 43, uh, I, I have a respect for cops, uh, very much a respect for good cops, the ones who can actually endure the bullshit of some of their fellows who just make everyone else look bad. Um, so look, my mom was a reserve officer for a little while. Uh, she was a cop, you know, she has a few stories. My grandfather here, I just got this a while back, it's his shadow box, he was a, uh, a Clackamas County Sheriff, and um, I understand the culture around, you know, police, a police culture, and protecting one another. Hey, I've worked with other people too. I understand camaraderie and companionship and protecting the people that you work with against others or those who are trying to, let's say, uh, bring you down, you know. But when it comes to the public, when you've sworn an oath to serve and protect the public and you lie on the stand to protect your own people, that you call your own people, you're missing the point that we are the ones that you're supposed to protect. You know, fellow police officers are, you know, secondary to the public good because we are the ones who pay the bill. We all know this, you know. We pay the taxes to have officers at our disposal and many of us feel like cops don't give a shit about us. So, uh, here are a few of the main problems I have with police which have compounded over the years. First off, it's illegal search and seizure. I had the, I had my house raided when I was like 20, and uh, they threatened to, to take my car, my mom's car, my mom's stuff. They basically looted my room, took everything I had, any comic book, a poster that had a pot leaf on it, anything that had to do with anything. And uh, I never got the stuff back, and that was partially my own fault. But they waited for three years after they took me to jail, took all my stuff, and then just didn't process the case. They waited till the last month of the statute of limitations, and then they came, they arrested me uh, at my work, in which I had just taken a manager position at a gas station. Uh, they pulled in, <laughs> handcuffed me in front of my coworkers and customers, and went to jail. Of course, I lost my job because I was in jail for a couple of days. Um, it just reinforced my hatred of police. It's like they could have done it a different way. But I won't go into my own personal experiences, but just to know where I'm coming from. First off, with cops, they have an ego. They can't be wrong. Have you ever once heard a police officer on a video say, I'm sorry, I apologize, I was wrong? No. If you read the laws to them, if you know your laws and you start quoting them, and many of us have seen this on YouTube on a lot of the cop videos, and I, I'm going to address that issue because that's a problem too, but... When you quote the actual law to a cop, you'll often hear this line of, oh, you think you're a lawyer now, huh? Or, oh, you think you're smart now, huh? It's like, no, I'm a citizen who knows my rights. Why don't you? And there's a certain, a, a strong ego that goes with not being able to admit 
when you're wrong. And it's not just a police issue, it's a human issue. But um, one of the biggest problems people have is with police just asking for your ID because they might suspect something. And as many of you know, you do not have to provide your identification to an officer unless he suspects you of an actual crime, in which case that he has to tell you what he suspects you of. And if they're not legally detaining you, you can walk away. Now this is a great thing to know, but people have been abusing this severely. And so we have these douchebags who, you know, get a few guys with a the camera, they stand outside of a fucking police station all day long and film inside of cops' cars and then wait for the cops to come out and harass them and ask them who they are. And then they go off on the cops about how they're, you know, they can do whatever they want. It's a free country. And the point is they're not just going about their business. They are looking for a fight. And so it becomes this battle of wits between the police and the guys with the camera. Well, the police know we better not do anything or else it'll make the YouTube video that much worse. And all I'm saying is that for the people who are out there doing that, just trying to get cops pissed off, you're doing a severe disservice to the rest of us who actually have put up with cops harassing us. If you're causing the harassment, then all it does is causes more of a divide between us and the police. Now, over the years, police have been getting much worse as far as, far as militarization. I mean, it's absurd. They have some of these small towns with a couple thousand people that have a, a fucking tank or an armored vehicles, you know. They'll use the SWAT team to go into somebody's house for a, a few suspected pot plants. And in the process, shoot their dog or one of them. And this has happened so many times. And the police say, well, we're just protecting ourselves. You know, when you have cops kicking down a door in full-on riot gear and masks, you know, 20 cops kicking in somebody's apartment door for a couple pot plants, there's something severely wrong with it if anyone gets hurt. But, um, so, as people learn their rights, they're starting to get a little more frustrated with police and the way that they abuse their power. It becomes much more apparent. The idea that you're just doing your job asking people for ID is, is, is that's not, not the truth. <laughs> and, and when you hear some of these conversations, when they keep pressing somebody for their information, every one of the cops I've heard in these situations say the same thing. Well, things are different these days, you know, with terrorism out there. And look, I'm not going to be fucking put aside with this bullshit about terrorism. You know, that is the number one tool that's used to oppress pop the populace in any nation, you know, uh, that becomes tyrannical. It's basically convince the people that they're, you know, that everyone is out to get them, so therefore they need to protect themselves and us by locking us away. Uh, you know, by taking away our rights and slowly chipping away at our freedoms, our ability to assemble and talk about things that are important to us. So, um, like one good example I have of this, the, the problem with police is, I've heard police say, well, I pulled him over because he looked at me. And then I've heard people say, cops say, well, I pulled him over because he drove by and didn't look at me. And you'll hear these both back and forth, like, what do you do? Do I look at a cop and then look away? Do I not look at the cop? What exactly is suspicious behavior? And on top of that, it's compounded by the fact that everyone pretty much is scared that they're going to get pulled over when they pass a cop. So the profiling issue is a very difficult one to resolve. We have a lot of people getting shot. We have a lot of unnecessary firearms being shot by police who need better training. And when you shoot someone 16 times in the back while they're running away, you have a serious mental issue. You should be locked away. As far as I'm concerned, you are a psychopath at that point. And uh, fortunately, the courts are starting to agree with this, but police have never been persecuted for these things. Up until the recent day, cops were never persecuted for firing, uh, even when it was totally unnecessary. It wasn't until body cams came around where it became, started becoming an issue. And um, this is what one of the main points I want to make. What the fuck is going on with police who are allowed to turn their cameras on and off? This should not be allowed. As far as I'm concerned, every police officer who is on duty and on the street should have a body cam that is continuously recording audio and video. In today's world, there's absolutely no reason it shouldn't. And they should be sent directly uh, to servers remotely. I mean, there was a case recently of, a, of an officer whose body cam, he had just hid it away because, uh, you know, he said, well, we just didn't have one. And then the evidence surfaced a year later and found out that he was 
totally bullshitting. He, you know, totally beat up some girl or something. Very much abusing power. And um, when you see the way that cops will even throw a young girl to the ground, uh, I just, what kind of a person does this? How can you fear for your life when there's 20 cops standing around one person? Even if that one person is acting like a lunatic, maybe that one person's had a bad fucking day. Maybe they just lost their wife or their kids or their job and everything's just falling apart. And they decided to get drunk and made one big mistake and all of a sudden they get a shot in the head in their own driveway. I mean, uh, it's, do I feel safer? You know, some of the most dangerous areas the cops won't even go into. And uh, so what's the real safety? Is it safety for the people or just safety for the police themselves? And on top of that, the court has always sided with the police. Because when it's your word against them, you know, what do you really have? Here's one of the biggest problems I have is this. If you have enough money, you can buy your way out of anything. So the real criminals, the white collar criminals, the ones that actually cost you and me money, the ones that do real damage, these are the people who get away with it because they can buy their way out. Corporations, you know, uh, banks, you know, the, the white collar criminals of the world. Um, somebody in a really nice car who gets pulled over, you think the cop's gonna mess with him if he's a millionaire? I mean, nobody wants to get sued. So, in other words, the more broke-ass a person looks, the more likely a cop is to uh, pull them over and harass them. And I've seen this, and I've heard cops say it. It's not just a, you know, a speculation. I've heard cops say, we pull over dirty cars. Or if that car has a dent in it, you know, it, it, we might want to pull it over, see what's going on. It's just, it's sad, because these are the people who get the tickets, the people who can't afford the tickets. And then they go to court, and they can't pay their fines. Then the fines compound. And there have been cases of people with a, a girl, lady with one parking ticket who ended up losing her car over it and losing her license permanently over this. There are some states now, I think Virginia is one of them, if I'm not mistaken, where if you don't pay your, your tickets, you lose your license completely. Uh, it's pretty absurd. I, but the thing is, this costs us all money by doing these things. And the police love to issue tickets for these things. There was an issue with some sting operations that were going on, I think somewhere in Tennessee um, or south of there, where there was a, a particular road that comes and goes from Mexico, and it was a main drug trade route. And so the cops decided to set up on the southbound side and bust everyone coming back with cash. They decided it wasn't worth confiscating the drugs because, you know, the drugs, all they have to do is turn it into evidence, and that's not as easy to get cash out of. If they pull them over on the other side, they could keep the cash because many, 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 many police, uh, uh, many states have rules where whatever police confiscate, they get a percentage of, if not all of it, for their force. So if you confiscate, you know, half a million in cash, you can use that to buy yourself a new tank or some new, you know, handguns, whatever it might be. Uh, this has got to stop. It has to end. The whole search and se seizure based on, you know, a cop's idea. Uh, there have been many cases where people have had all their money taken. Thousands of dollars that they had the right full, you know, they had a right to have it. They knew, had receipts to show where they were going. One kid was driving to California to buy a car and the cops took all his money claiming it was for drugs and his mom's like, no, he just left. He was heading to California to buy this car. Uh, several lawsuits have been filed and much of this is pushed under the rug, but it happens all the time. And um, meanwhile, you know, the cops can basically do whatever they want. Erase their camera footage, uh, you know, cover the microphone, you know. It happens so often that how can people not be pissed off? And more than that, I realize that that's not all cops. It's only a percentage of cops, and I don't even think it's half of them. But it's all of them if they're not standing up for the people that they're sworn to protect. In other words, if you're willing to cover for a crime that a fellow officer did, you're just as guilty. And there's a fear within that culture of turning in cops who are liars. I understand that. If you, are, if you find out that your fellow cops are all skimming off the top and you tell someone, you're the outcast, you're the one who's going to lose your job, I get that. But maybe that's something we need to really think about then. If that's the kind of career that we want for ourselves. 
you know. Um, the scare tactics, the intimidation, the telling people that, you know, we're going to get the dogs and we're going to tear your car apart. I've heard so many threats from them uh, in my own life, and I can't imagine the kind of the kind of shit that they pulled that was never recorded, you know. The kind of beatdowns that have happened before the day of body camera that was just swept under the rug, you know. And you can call a cop an asshole. You can legally tell a cop that I think you are an asshole. But there's a law that if it's instigating violence or if it will cause a riot, then they can arrest you for it. So in other words, if you're in a public place and you're screaming, this cop's an asshole, get him! That's instigating violence, and therefore they can arrest you for that. But some cops seem to think that it's illegal for you to look them in the eye and say, fuck you, you're an asshole, sir. But it's not. Do I recommend that? Of course not. But it's something that people need to be aware of. We still have freedom of speech. And it seems a lot of people don't realize this. It seems like we're afraid to speak of certain, you know, when it's something that we're afraid that it may be illegal, but as soon as we do get arrested, people will just talk their asses off. That's when you have the right not to speak. And I would say if you do get arrested for something you said, that's time to shut up and not say anything else. Wait till you have a lawyer. It's never worth it to talk to cops if you're already under arrest. So, that's my opinion on the ish. And, um, yes, as another note, you can film them, too. It is completely legal to film police. But, they could also take your phone and bust it, and you'll have little recourse over it. The point being, that be smart. You may have the rights to do what you're doing around cops. But if you're filming them, you know, and they break your camera and push you down, it's their word against yours. Just be smart, that's all. But do film cops. If you think that they might be, you know, somebody might be getting in trouble, the more uncomfortable they feel, um, then maybe the more proper they will conduct themselves. I heard a quote from a Texas uh, cop who said that it was something that they say in their uh, precinct. It's a saying that says, if you're brown and you're around, you're going down. And this is their why they pull over and profile 